Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41, we have the familiar story of Jesus calming the storm. Peace, be still. It's been a long, exhausting day, and Jesus has climbed onto this boat, and the boat has set out for, across Galilee. He's gone to the stern, he's put his head on a cushion, and he's fallen asleep. And they set out, and they, they, they're used to everything, and the sun, maybe the sun goes down a bit, or clouds come across, the boat begins to rock, the wave rise, the waves rise, the sky darkens, and even though the boat is manned by experienced fishermen, they begin to get a bit concerned and worried and fearful. And in this story, you've got a clash between faith and fear. It's really instructive, really interesting. Which is going to win? And we always have to ask that question when the storms come in our life, whether my fear of the situation is going to win or my faith in the one who takes me through it. So given that these were quite tough fishermen, this must have been out of the order. It's fair to assume that. So they wake him up and he utters a brief word of command. And in, in all these miracles of Jesus, there's such a simplicity. He just says the word and, and it happens. And the storm subsides. And they're astonished. And it says, fearful. Who is this whom even the winds and waves obey? Now, why do you think they woke him up? Did they want him to calm the storm? Or did they just resent the fact <laughs> that he was so calm and confident and asleep when they were panicking? And, well, with their surprise at the coming of the storm, you have to infer that they didn't expect him to do anything like that. So they say, aren't you concerned that we are going to drown? So the we probably includes Jesus as well. But they're still terrified even after he calms the storm. Now think about this. Their fear wasn't produced by the storm, but by the calm. Or really, what the calm meant. That Jesus possessed the authority to rebuke both the waves and them. And he doesn't even comfort them. After the crisis is over and the boat is still again and they've got their trembling nerves back in order again, the adrenaline has, has, has gone down a peg. He doesn't comfort them after the crisis. He just tells them to grow up. To, he says, haven't you got any faith? And the, the point is where Jesus leads us, when he leads us, through the valley of the shadow of death. We should fear no evil because he's with us. He's with us. He's saying, you, you should know that. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It makes me wonder what areas of my life I'm tempted to respond in fear and faith. You know the saying, when the going gets tough, the weak get out of here. And you see this simple message. Who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Jesus is demonstrating authority. And authority comes right the way through the gospel of Mark. You know, authority over sin. Authority over um, sickness. Authority over leprosy. And it's sort of mounting and moving. And now it's authority. And it's like the authority of the creator over creation. It's a growing, strong theme. And then we're chosen to be with him, to come to him like the disciples and to go from him and to live out in that way, live in that kind of faith. And when they get fearful in the storm, he rebukes them, not just for not believing in him, but for not believing in God enough. So I have this, this word that's, that's come to me and it's a, it's a wonderful truth and this is it. It is, tell your problem how big your God is. Tell your problem how big your God is. And so often we invert it, don't we? And we go worrying so much. And really the point of this story is to bring us a rebuke for not living out of our faith, out of the bigness of God, but living out of our fear and our inability to control the things that are happening to us. Do you hear it? Do you receive it today? 
God bless you.